teachers have been navigating uncertainty since spring. Now, as back to school rolls into fall, the short and long term forecast for COVID-19 still feels uncertain as well as challenging. Now, as schools resume this week, some learners have lost parents, teachers and family members, while others have to deal with the agony of their colleagues no longer returning to school. The psychological effects of the coronavirus on children are similar to those seen in adults. To expand on this, I am joined on the line by clinical psychologist Dr. Anina Dutoy to expand on this. Good evening, doctor. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Doctor, what, have you, what, have, what has been rather the psychological effects of this pandemic on our teaching and learning community since the advent of COVID-19 in Namibia? Yes, the pand pandemic definitely triggered radical changes in daily life, causing severe psychological distress, not just amongst teachers and learners, but also amongst the entire population in Namibia. There is a collective atmosphere of fear and alarm and then with chronic feelings of anxiety and insecurity about what the future holds for us. Teachers and learners are especially prone to high levels of uncertainty with the disruption of teaching and also becoming used to distance learning. Learners have not been used to this type of teaching in the past and with the added challenges of lack of infrastructure and technological advances um, in the regions has made it even more traumatic for parents and children to cope with the syllabus. This coupled with feelings of anxiety and depression which is on the increase amongst learners and teachers brings the continued fear that learners will suffer academically because of the pandemic. So I think we can definitely see that the psychological effects of the pandemic on both the teachers and the learners is just on the increase and professionals, but also parents and teachers are critical in trying to maintain their own well-being, but also the children that are in their care. Right. Now, doctor, how do negative emotions affect the health as well as the wellness of those around you? Yeah, it, it, the negative emotions, I think, firstly, the effect that it has on oneself, where it creates chronic stress. It upsets the hormone balance, it depletes brain chemicals that's required for happiness, and it damages the immune system, which is critical in fighting the infection. So in addition to that, um, it influences the cognitive processes that is needed for learning, such as memory, attention, problem solving, which is critical in teaching learners, but also for learners to be able to absorb material. Right. So negative emotions also take away your enthusiasm for life. It makes you feel hopeless, helpless. Um, it takes away your confidence and it makes you dislike yourself and others. And we can just imagine if you have a teacher that is um, suffering with negative emotions, that struggles to, to cope with the workload and the change in the dynamics of teaching and how feelings can be contagious and that learners will pick up from this. So again, there's a collective response to negative emotions, not just amongst the teachers and their colleagues and co-workers trying to cope with what is going on, but also how this is transferred to the learners, which eventually results in poorer learning outcomes. Doctor, what would you say teachers can incorporate into their everyday to help uh, with, uh, with, with, with this pandemic fatigue as well as burnouts on themselves and on their learners and how also to avoid transferring some of those uh, to the impressionable youths, as it were? Yes. I think the first thing that we have to realize is that, is that you are not alone. Um, everybody is affected by the collective loss of, of loved ones and the effects of the pandemic. And often one feels lost in a storm. And I think we can equate the effects of corona, the infection, with being in a storm where we are completely lost. We don't know where we are supposed to anchor ourselves. And that becomes very important that a person identifies a place, whether it's a place or something or a routine on a daily basis, 
that anchors you, something that gives you some security, something that you can can hang on to. Maybe you find it in, in small habits that give you a purpose or a joy in a day. Some people might exercise, other people do Bible study, maybe it is talking to a friend. And I think what is also incredibly important, especially when negative emotions are concerned, is that one must practice being grateful. Um, we are all mourning the people that we have lost. But the positive side of that is that we have to celebrate the living, um, the people that are with us. We have to appreciate that we are still surrounded by people that love us and that want to support us. And we can celebrate the living through acts of kindness, listening to people around you by sharing some of yourself. Um, and I think also very important is that we have to learn to be more patient, to be more tolerant, to be more forgiving, not just with others, but also with ourselves. No, definitely. Uh, Dr. Dutoy, before we let you go, any final remarks, advice to guardians uh, and parents, as well as, of course, the teachers? Mm -hmm. I often work with, with teenagers and adolescents, but also with, with younger children, and I am always grateful when I see these young people wearing their masks, washing their hands in the practice. But I also want to remind the young people who... Um, have at least of a fear, I think, of, of the coronavirus, because we do see that, that older people struggle a bit more, is to remember that vaccination, wearing your mask and washing your hands, is not only to keep you safe, but it is also to keep those around you safe. You as a learner, as a young person, go home at night and your parents might be older or elderly, your grandparents, uncles, whoever is taking care of you, and they may have comorbidities. So look after yourself, because if you do that, you are also looking out for the people next to you. And through this collective action, we stand a much better chance at beating the effects of the pandemic. All right. Dr. Dutoy, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you very much. Good night. And that was clinical psychologist Dr. Anina Dutoy talking to us about the psychological effects of COVID-19.